Greetings, everyone. Good morning. My name is Pastor Donnie Huslidge. I pastor Apostolic Lighthouse Church. And this is the pastor's moment, just a brief glimpse of the morning. Uh, we tried to give you a new background. I had to move Pixie out of here. She was way too loud. But one day, I think I'll just take a video of her so you can understand. Uh, she's probably the noisiest dog that I've ever had. But uh, she's a good dog. So that is good. We have some prayer requests for this morning. And uh, we welcome everybody, and uh, uh, God bless you to each one of you. Uh, Ann Mathis, uh, her brother has been diagnosed with stage four cancer, and then her sister has shingles. So what a what a complexity in her family and her her siblings. Uh, the Ballard family needs special prayer. Uh, Bob Zerpoli, his brother, passed away, and uh, all these are just tough. And then Vita Sharp uh, is recovering from a broken arm. So let's uh, remember them in prayer this morning and uh, all of those other needs. Let's just, we're going to start off with prayer. Let's just jump right in. Lord Jesus, all the needs that are out there, Lord, I ask you to meet those needs. This morning, you met us in a wonderful way, Lord God. Even though we've had all kinds of weather issues last night and concerns, Lord, but today I hear the chirping of birds and there is the sun coming out, Lord. That's what I expect from you, your glory, God, and you will endure with us and help us get through all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, it's an <clears throat> incredible thing when something comes and sickness comes along those lines. I just kind of lean into the Lord and just trust him. He's got both sides. He's got this side, the side of life, and he's got the side of death. He rules both sides. So uh, I have no concerns. Uh, to God be the glory and, uh, you know, my thing that we have so often, even in my own, is, you know, sometimes we, as we get older, we don't keep ourselves healthy. And that's something that needs to be said. We need to do some walking. I can remember my mother, <clears throat> my sister always telling my mother, go for a walk, go for a walk, go for a walk. And just a little bit of walking would have helped some of that cardiovascular stuff get going. So I'll jump in on that bandwagon and recommend, including to myself, to be more active, uh, especially in as you get older. There's got to be an area where, you know, I asked a friend the other day, I said, are you ready to start walking again? Because uh, that was something uh, that he and I did for quite a few, quite a couple of years, I think. Uh, we Once a week, we went on a walk. So uh, it's time to get active. Amen. That's that's my morning recommendation. Thank you to all those that were at service last night. Uh, what a great crowd of people uh, and feedback and folks that I haven't seen in 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 ages uh, came to uh, came to the service. So um, I'm just I, and I didn't see you. I just my wife told me afterwards, and uh, I just I'm very thankful. God bless y'all. I love you dearly. And uh, today I want to jump off into a couple of lists that I think would be helpful. Uh, I'm, you know, I've been recently in the mode of just driving some stakes home, which I'm glad, glad for. But today I want to touch a subject just real quick that is that has been on my mind forever and also has been in my list to speak about. And a lot of these things are part of the lists I have that I want to speak about. And this one is this first question. And am I teachable? Am I teachable? Now this is just a personal question you ask yourself. And I've got 12 points here. I'm going to run through them really quick because I got a couple others I want to make. But um, and I will I will do my best. I will actually post these on Facebook as soon as I'm done. Um, am I willing to listen more than talk? Number one. Am I willing to listen more than talk? Number two. I admit when I am mistaken. Number three. I observe before acting on a situation. Back to the question, am I teachable? Number four, am I able to agree to disagree? Can I walk away from something without making sure I fixed or got everybody on my agenda? Number five, I desire information more than answers. I desire, and you know, I, I don't know if I need to comment on these, but uh, I desire information more than answers. I enjoy asking questions. Am I teachable? Number seven, I am open to suggestions and new ideas. Now, this this is one that just gets me. 
uh, I am open to suggestions and new ideas. I know many people, uh, probably including myself, that I'm not open to suggestions. Um, and, and the way to introduce that to somebody is say, uh, I have a suggestion and see if they're willing to take it, you know, or, hey, I have an idea. And you run it by them and see what they think. Number eight, I feel comfortable asking for advice or directions. Number nine, I am a patient and willing student. Number 10, I enjoy reading for information that is practical and applicable. Number 11, I seek out new prospect, uh, perspectives on the question of life. And number 12, I can appreciate criticism without being deeply wounded. Uh, oh, that is always tough. <laughs> but I can appreciate criticism. Amen. Hallelujah. Complicated. I don't think I've conquered it, all those, but I will tell you, every once in a while I read that list just so I can remember, am I actually teachable? And, and really, to be successful as a Christian, you must be teachable. You must be consistently teachable. Something to where you're 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 receiving, uh, you know. Okay, then here's here's another one: how to listen so people will talk. And this this is just some practical shots. This is about seven of them. But look uh, look at people when they speak to you. Look at them when they speak to you. So you can listen, so people will talk. Uh, then the next one is uh, lean forward as you listen. Lean forward as you listen. The way I printed this, I can't hardly see it, but lean forward as you listen. Uh, that's incredible. Just kind of that. Again. Then give feedback. Uh, don't interrupt or change the subject. My worst thing that I do is I will, uh, you can't get a word in edgewise with me sometimes. And I have to just stop myself from talking. People look at me, like, why'd you stop talking? I said, because I'm saying too many words. <laughs> don't interrupt or change the subject. Uh, repeat and see, I just interrupted myself and changed the subject. See, repeat back to them some of the things they said. Now, my wife is great at this. She'll stop somebody and say, now, this is what I heard you say. Is that what you meant? And they'll go, oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Well, there's a confirmation there. Matter of fact, she used to stop the kids because she'd say, go do this. And they would, you know, what? and she'd stop them, call them back and say, what did I tell you to do? And they'd have to repeat word for word what they what she told them to do. She'd make sure it was getting getting done. And then uh, compliment them on their insight and wisdom. Now that that is a neat thing. It's not flattery. It's just compliment them and say, "Well, thank you for your insight." I have a friend that I go sit with, and he just bubbles off insight. And most of y'all know him. He he's in his seventies, and he uh, lives in Liberty Hill, and his uh, last name is associated with West. <laughs> okay, when I sit down with him, I end up complimenting him at the end of the conversation because uh, he just kind of bubbles over with wisdom without ever uh, m meaning to. It's not intentional. It's just him. He just says things that are that are very wise and astute, and I I'm thankful for that. And most of my friends are that way. So I end up uh, thanking most of my friends, and kudos to all you know, three of them, <laughs> and then all my, uh, but I like to uh, compliment people on uh, their insight and wisdom, and then uh, show your appreciation, thank them for sharing their thoughts with you, it's always important to thank people for sharing their thoughts, now here's another one, got you on a run today, uh, how to talk so people will listen, now the other one was how to listen so people will talk, now these are totally different list. They're different concepts, different directions. This is how to talk so people will listen. Uh, be clear. Uh, be specific and direct about what you want to communicate. Be clear. You know, if people want to listen, it's it's because you're going to be clear. And this next one is really important. Be concise. If you like to, if you, if you t take too long to get to your point, you will lose the person's attention. And that's true. And then some people, as you you know, it's not so much for you to put your words out there. It's for your words to be heard. So you're going to have to think about your words and make sure they they move right. If they move too slow, you'll lose some people. If they move too fast, they'll, you'll lose some people. Be careful about how you deliver your words uh, so people will listen. And then this other one is be, um, um, be considerate. Be considerate and respectful of the person you're talking to. 
And the next one is be consistent. Make sure your nonverbal message is consistent with your verbal message. Also make sure your lifestyle is consistent with what you say. Now this is so profound. <laughs> I know people that I used to listen to that I don't listen to anymore. And the reason I don't listen to them anymore is their life is not consistent. They're a lot of talk and a lot, a lot of do. Boom. Uh, if, if you're in my life and I've stopped listening to you, that is a question you have to ask. It's because you're not consistent. And I don't, I don't really have time for somebody that's just a windbag. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> I hope that's that's not too blunt, but the deal is, is that you need to be consistent. There needs to be a connection between your life and what, what you're doing and what you're saying, just like it said right there. And then uh, be uh, comfortable. If you're nervous or uptight, you'll make others feel the same way. If you're If you're always nervous and stuff, just if you want people to listen, you've got to be clear, be concise, be considerate, be consistent, be comfortable. And this last one, be credible. That kind of goes with the be consistent one, but the credible one, make sure the facts are correct and be careful about exaggerations. Uh, oh, as a preacher, that is the biggest ditch you can fall into constantly. And I, I, I have to have fallen into that thousands of times. Uh, but, you know, try to fact check yourself and be the other day, somebody was telling me a story out of the Bible, and I had to look at them and say, I think you've got two stories mixed. You've got this one and this one. And then they went, oh, you're right. Uh, well, that's not that's not a breach of contract or a fireable offense. But what that is, is just that it, look at your facts. Try to make sure your facts are correct. Now, there's, you can't have them perfect all the time. Um, but also, you need to control your exaggeration. Because you don't need to exaggerate, certainly, the Bible to get your point across because it's well written by itself. You don't need to add or take away. But when your own life, you have the, we have this tendency that it happened twice, but you're going to say it happened six times. Uh, and, and it's just a slip of the tongue and a roll of your thoughts. And when it's done, sometimes you'll get that trigger that says, hey, you just said something that's incorrect. But you'll let it go. I, I try to stop and say, no, though I think that's incorrect. I try to stop it right away. Because I don't want to live with that feeling of I've said something incorrect. So uh, be careful of exaggeration and watch your facts. That shouldn't prevent you from communicating. But that's how to talk so people will listen. Well, praise the Lord. little thought for this morning. I pray your day is incredible. Uh, our days are just incredibly busy. Uh, uh, we, have, we have events uh, we have a family event coming up that, that's that's taken us three days to prepare for. So uh, things like that. And then other things are moving all around. So um, certainly I'll pray for you and you pray for your pastor. We just need to make it through some of these things. And then also for those COVID victims, I did look this morning. Uh, there uh, there are no, there is, uh, there is a new death in Williamson County. It is one. Uh, there is only 15 people hospitalized right now. So, uh, wow, the, the numbers have almost come to a standstill on COVID, uh, which is amazing. Uh, and I would just say that's very hopeful. I'm not going to jump in on that bandwagon, and, but that's Williamson County. I'm not looking outside of Williamson County. There appears to be plenty in the news for people to look at. I don't know. Oh, just disgusting. The whole the whole thing is disgusting. The way people act is just beyond comprehension. Don't be one of those people. Don't add to the, the menagerie of craziness that's out there. Be sensible. Be sober-minded. Be prayerful. Get before God. Love God. Pursue God. Pursue God. Today, pursue God. Get into the Word today. Let it just wrap around you and change the way you think and be prayerful today. Praise the Lord. Tonight is our uh, home groups. Uh, we're, we'll be out at the church. Just saw a rabbit run by my window. That's crazy. You could see out and see a rabbit run by. Um, uh, tonight we'll be up at the church at 630. If you want to be at our home group, uh, bring something to eat. And then it can be anything. It can be chips and dip. It's simple. Uh, come on up to the church at 630. We'll be gathering together. We'll be using social distancing. That has become a little less and less. Certainly with the numbers stabilizing, uh, that's well justified. But I know there's people out there that have all kinds of opinions. Um, let's just move forward. 
let's try to keep our opinions not to be uh, separatist, but but together. And I'm not talking about social distance. I'm talking about emotions and together with people. We're coming together united to worship, to praise God, to seek the face of God. That's what we come to church for. Well, home group, we come together to to stir up that fellowship and to encourage each other. And and remember, the home group lesson is not a law or a rule. If you feel the move to pray and things like that in a home group, that's what we're there to do. We're there to lift each other up. So I invite you to home groups. Uh, you, you can find those. Uh, most of us know who our home groups are or people that are close to us. Uh, Elder Brunson, uh, uh, Nick Brunson, and uh, Brother Lyman out in uh, Jonestown. So we can contact any of those people or contact me. If you want to go to a home group tonight, 630, just give me a buzz. I'll connect you in with one. Uh, oh, also, there's one at Cody's house out in Granger. God bless y'all. Lord Jesus, have your way today. Bless our church. Bless those that are listening. Bless our day. Let there be an anointing that goes with us. I ask you right now, God, that that anointing goes with us. Lord, that you give security to people that are frustrated right now. Lord, that you will anoint them and give them the ability to face this day. Lord, give them a supernatural boldness and an encouragement because you are with them. Do this in Jesus' name. God bless y'all. Have a great day.